Hi guys, my name is Subshooter, I'm the man of the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I want to talk about something that kind of relates to uh, the video on cooperation that I talked about last week, as well as uh, a video that I did on loneliness like ages ago, um, which was more a case of dealing with loneliness, not necessarily why you are lonely. And this video I want to talk about kind of how we isolate ourselves or the three main things that we do that kind of drive us away from others or keep others away from us. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to touch on this before in a couple of different ways, but especially after doing the, the video last week on cooperation, I felt that this was um, one of those things that, that kind of ties in quite nicely with that, because where we've got those five ways to to cooperate, five ways to work with people and get on with people and make sure that everyone's working together. You want to make sure that you avoid these three things so that you don't isolate yourself whilst trying to make it work with people, trying to achieve a result with others. So without further ado, the first one is criticizing people. And this is, you know, there is a time for criticism and there is a time for constructive criticism and there is a time for just just laying it out flat in front of people but the the thing is that when we are criticized especially when we're criticized about things that don't really matter you know silly things here or there then it kind of puts us into either fight or flight or possibly like freezing us up you know uh, over analyzing our situation paralyzing us in place and obviously none of these things are good things to put people in into the state of you know if we're going out and we criticize someone that's right in front of us um it's it's if we could put them into a fight situation then they want to come at us they want to confront us they don't want to work with us they want to defeat us and, and overcome us if we put them into flight, then even if they don't actually run away, then they're averse to us. They don't want to engage. They want to be uh, kind of able to put some distance between us just to make sure that they feel safe. And if you're trying to work together closely on a project or trying to work together closely on anything, then that kind of running away kind of fearful response that creates distance between you uh, is also not going to be a positive thing at all. And in regards to freezing, it, it kind of locks you down. Um, when you're the person that freezes up, it's going to lock you down into a place that, that you can't engage. You know, you get so wrapped up in yourself and it's the whole deer in a headlights thing and the headlights are going to be you. You know, they're, if you're the one that's doing the criticizing, that person freezing up, it basically nullifies any effect that they would have on whatever it is that you're working on. They're not doing anything anymore. So one of the things that that's I, I came across when I was doing my, my training as a coach and that I came across beforehand as well and that also gets repeated a fair amount uh, when talking about things like loneliness or becoming more more friendly and more open to people is the, the exercise of you know just just doing nothing but noticing and taking note, taking a tally of how often you just internally just silently uh, judge others how si how you just occasionally criticize those that are working around you you know um, where at school at work at home we grow up with an awful lot of criticism and you know it it's leads us then to criticize others when you don't have all the information, when you aren't the same person, when you're you're basing everything on you and yourself rather than taking in the world around you. And again, we've talked about awareness, we've talked about uh, basing things on facts and evidence and working out kind of um, to, to balance those two things so that you have a solid basis for whatever you're doing. In regards to uh, the criticizing, criticizing and criticism that you provide other people, uh, making sure that you're not just basing it all on you. You know, if you're criticizing someone's work, then you want to do it firstly constructively, i.e. not just, oh, this is crap, but in a way that's, oh, well, this isn't quite good enough, but here's the standard we want and these are the good parts that need to stay there because those were, those were fine. You know, you need to highlight both good and bad. You need to be balanced in your approach. 
but also it's a case of um, the the criticism that we throw out there is usually more projective than anything else. And obviously, if you're projecting things that you don't like about yourself, you don't like about the interactions that you're having with those people, or if it's purely based on how you feel vulnerable, how you feel um, the world should be, then that's not really a, a criticism that can be constructive because the other person that you're interacting with isn't you. They're not going to be able to be you. They have an entirely different background, entirely different life, different perspectives, different personality traits, different biology to a degree. And so they're not going to be able to follow through in the way that you would want them to as a result of you criticizing them. You know, it, it's often the the way we criticize is an extension of how we we judge ourselves. And so if we're beating ourselves out up about something, then that's fine. That's entirely your own prerogative to do in regards to yourself. I mean, I've talked about how to deal with your own issues in previous videos. But when it comes to uh, dealing with yourself directly, you know, you've, you've only got you and you in that little space that is your head. You have to manage that yourself. When it comes to dealing with other people and providing criticism, it has to be based on something that isn't from you, isn't from inside you. It has to be based on other criteria that are outside of you and outside of them that you can both sit down and analyse and work through together rather than kind of just impressing what you feel is right for you onto someone else. It doesn't work. You know, none of us are cut exactly from the same cloth. Even identical twins differ substantially between the two. Um, and so as a result, you're never going to get those that perfect transference between one person's harsh, direct criticism and otherwise. In which case, you know, being the, the way to remedy this, the way to prevent this from isolating you is uh, being more gentle, trying to be more constructive, looking at facts, stepping outside of just you and the way that you judge yourself and the way that you feel the world should be and look for things that are either solidly established like company policies or, or criteria for work, working standards, things like that that are all down on paper that can be analysed, worked through and dealt with. Or you need to, to just try and soften your tendencies in regards to criticising others. Look at ways to put your point across without critiquing, without being critical, without being negative. Um, you know, it, it's, it can be hard to do and it takes practice, I will say that. But it's, you know, one of those major things that people who are otherwise entirely well-meaning will do um, that, that drives others away from them, puts others' backs up, causes fights and so on and so forth. Now, the, the next thing that I kind of want to talk about is... Um, kind of the, the struggle for perfectionism because this is where the the critiquing and the criticism kind of comes from you know it, it's wanting that ideal and as I've said in other videos you you can't have perfect there's no such thing as perfect you know um, no one should be held to a a any kind of perfection whichever way you want to define it you know, it, perfectionism is, is, is usually driven by all manner of negative feelings that they're never going to be good enough and they need to keep striving and all that kind of thing. And if that's what you're feeling, then you need to firstly forgive yourself and understand that you will never be perfect. No one will ever be perfect and it's unfair to hold yourself to those standards. But also, the the if you are going to kind of impress upon the world that perfectionist ideal that you have um, other people aren't going to get on board with it you know you're highlighting your own uh, your own feelings your own weaknesses and then trying to hide them behind this veneer of perfection or at least the the attempts that you are making towards it it's you trying to avoid those those elements of, of negativity that you see in yourself and trying to struggle and, and work beyond them and grab others and take it, take them with you because again like with the criticism and, uh, angle that we mentioned a moment ago it's one of those things where you you are going to 
sit and look and go, well, this is what I feel, so it must be right for everybody. Again, you're all cut from the same cloth. No one is perfect. No one is the same. And a lot of the time when you try and push for perfection that is impractical, doesn't work, doesn't make sense, doesn't work for different people, again, you're not even necessarily going to cause any of the kind of fight or flight or the freezing responses. You might just get people ignoring you because they know that you are pushing far beyond what you need to push for. Yeah? In which case, again, the core of this is taking a step back, making sure that you you don't have to just freeze up or lock yourself into these different places. You need to look for ways that you can talk to people, ways that you can take things on in regards to what's practical and what is it isn't. Look for the facts. Because again, those are the things that as much as I usually talk about it from like the bottom up in regards to that will be your bedrock, that will hold you in place. Also, when you're trying to kind of shoot for the stars that you're never going to reach, but you've tied 50 balloons to yourself and you're floating up in the air, that rock that you've created, that um, solid element, that's what's going to keep you grounded. That's what's going to keep you, even if you float a little way, if you've got that rock attached to you too, it's going to pull you back down to earth. It's going to keep you uh, connected and on the same level as everybody else that you're working with so you can actually make progress. And especially in a world where, at the moment, everyone is pushing for perfection. Everyone needs to be the best. Everyone needs to be the person that stands out the most um, and everything else, rather than just being the, the people that are most effective or most functional within their situation. You know, it, it's they always need to push further and push beyond. And there are, you know, culture tells us to do that. And it's unrealistic and it's harmful and it causes depression and anxiety and upset and so making sure that you've got that place that you can ground yourself that you can work with other people that's so much more important than actually achieving perfection because as I said perfection if it seems to be perfection probably not it yeah choose what perfection is for you and make it a realistic form of perfection an ideal of what you want how you want it when you want it rather than this lofty thing that is never going to be attainable. And then the last thing, and this is the thing that kind of attaches into kind of both of, of either the, the criticism and the, the perfectionism that we've mentioned so far, and that is shame. You know, both of these things are driven by shame. Criticism, as said, often a projection of what we feel about ourselves and the fact that we're critiquing ourselves in that way it promotes being ashamed of yourself, you know, sad, upset at the fact that you are not achieving. Same with with perfectionism. You want this thing and you, ne you never end up getting it, in which case you must be the problem. You're not getting far enough. You're not doing enough. And again, when it comes to expanding that out to other people, either they're not doing enough or they can't achieve what you want them to achieve. And so then you're passing on that shame, that negativity, that that sadness almost and you know this is again one of the problems that we see with modern society where we are lied to in regards to just just craftily in regards to which pieces of information we are given around i don't know things like um the the average wages that people bring home where the actual figure the modal figure that i talked about way way back in a video when i first started this channel is closer to kind of fifteen to seventeen thousand uh, pounds in the UK, uh, and that is the the, mo the modal average is the that most people are within that bracket, and yet all of the other numbers that we look at are the median, where someone's just basically thrown a dart at the centre point on on the scale and said that's the middle, and it's about ten k different, but as a result you see a lot of people feeling ashamed, they're not getting that money. Why not? Well, because actually they're probably average. They probably are average. They're probably the same as everybody else in the largest population along that scale. But they are always told that they aren't, that they're underachieving, that they're not doing well enough. And as a result, what does that build up? That builds up on um, on this this painful uh, emotional response, which you know often develops into self-loathing or kind of the the lashing out kind of transferring your shame or reflecting it onto other people and 
and dealing with it that way or looking for ways to um, kind of duck it and avert it and get away from it in other ways again either that fight situation where you're throwing it out into the world or that aversion situation where that kind of flight situation where you're running away you know rather than than doing that though where again it's fairly obvious why that would be bad no one likes to be around someone who is always beating themselves up and always being negative about themselves but then also you don't want to be told that you're part of the problem and that you're terrible and it's all your fault you know or, or that we all suck because that one person's just having a bad day you know rather than doing that you know allow space give yourself some time um, and again work with facts work with evidence and actually do some analysis because again if you look if the, if all those those people especially the younger people that I've talked to who don't feel they're doing well enough who don't have enough money who feel like a failure when they've only just started when they've only just left university when they've only just had a, their their first couple of chances of doing anything and these are people that I've worked with people that I've coached people that I've just talked to as friends when they when when those individuals are feeling that way um, they need to take that moment they need to take that step back they need to work out whether or not what they think what they believe is true because obviously if you are genuinely failing if you haven't done the work on your uni assignments if you haven't done enough work or, or you've slacked off in your job so you're not going to get that pay rise you're not going to get that promotion then that's also something you can learn from. It's not something that you need to be ashamed of. It's something that you need to analyze and work forward from. But for those people who just feel terrible because they're in a, a job that pays 16K a year and they're struggling and they're still having to live with their parents and they're still having to do whatever else, well, firstly, times have changed from 20 odd years ago or so, 20, 30 years ago, when you, a person with a, a single breadwinner was able to afford a house plus family plus whatever else because the the level of kind of property values and and other values were more in line with the amount that people were getting paid every month where now that number is has vastly changed um but also you know actually take a look at the figures you're being paid as much as the majority of people within the within the largest bracket um, within at the very least the UK population I'm not sure on the the figures for other countries like the US and otherwise but it's it's a case of taking into account the the those other people are all there with you you if you're average then that's a good starting place that's a good place to jump off from to get going from you know you can only if you're at average already, as long as you don't mess up, you can only go up. If you mess up, fine, you might take a little bit of a slip down, but you can you can work with that. It's much, much better to realise that you are in that average gap that you need to then, you know, you have a, a basis to work from rather than assuming right from the very beginning and perceiving right from the very beginning that you are, you suck. That, that you aren't achieving, that you are below average and the, that you're seemingly, no matter what you're doing, you're not climbing. It, it gets in your own way and it's very, very tough. But again, when it comes to dealing with other people, you don't want to be told that you and all of us suck and you don't want to, to hear um, someone always telling, especially if you like that person, you don't want to continually hear them telling you that they are terrible, that they suck, that they're just not good enough because that's just frustrating and it's saddening and it's something that you don't want to deal with afterwards and as a result you know taking giving yourself that time working with the facts doing some analysis and reflection just to get yourself back into a, a good place to keep making progress because you you know you might be making slow progress but progress is progress you can't argue with that but anyway guys i'd love to hear your thoughts on this because you know this is these are all obviously things that we probably see in our friends in our family and those around us um, and especially considering that at least according to my YouTube analytics most of us are around the same age between kind of 18 and 30 and so you know I'm sure you guys have seen as much of people in leaving uni or, or going into jobs and just basically hitting a wall not getting anywhere feeling demoralized 
you know not being able to work with people not being able to connect with others you know i'm i'm sure it's been tough but then again also maybe you've got some some ideas on how you dealt with it as opposed to some of the things that i suggested below um you know every story that we share is another potential learning experience so i'd love to hear anyway thank you very much for watching guys i'll see you in the video later take care thank you very much for watching guys if you enjoyed this video then please drop us a like share this video and subscribe for more and i'll see you in the video later take care